She's not a regular man. She's a cool man. I whisper to myself as I try to make tracksuits glam when it's every day of my life. This whole entire pregnancy. I'm just being me. I'm just being trendy. It's not like nothing else fits. Hello everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Lovely to have you back. Thanks for joining today. I thought today in preparation for baby boy arriving, baby boy number two, I would do one of those really helpful, fantastic videos that is all about products I regret buying for my first baby and products that I would say essentials like newborn essentials things I'm really excited to be using again for my second child I just want to start off this video by catching my breath hun don't worry Ellie your stamina's gonna come back babe don't worry you'll be able to talk fast again before you know it but I want to start off this video by saying, obviously, all a newborn needs, really, like the only newborn essentials a baby actually needs is loving parents, a roof over their head, warmth, shelter, security, safety, and a boob or a bottle, whatever you're choosing to do, babe. So when I sit here and come on and I'm like, these are my newborn essentials, I'm more just saying that these products will be really handy to you. I think you'll like them a lot in your house with your baby. Having been through this once before and having been an extremely OTT first time mum, wanted every product on the market, fell into these like wanting to follow the trends and all of that jazz. I feel like I'm going into birthing my second baby a lot more like, okay, now I actually know the deal. Let's go for rodeo number two, babe. Bit calmer, okay? I spent all this morning making a list, so hopefully this video is not gonna be as off tangent and like irrelevant as a lot of my other content seems to be right now when my pregnancy brain is just not really working. So I thought we could start off with baby products I regret buying and what I'm going to be using instead and then we'll move into the things I do love, did love and will be reusing. Overall everybody, you're going to love this if you're a productive girly that enjoys numbers. I've made it 25 products, okay? So these are 25 things that I think if I could go back to myself as a first time mum, I'd be like, just do it like this. Just enjoy these products, okay? I'll also leave as many links as possible to a lot of this stuff that I'm mentioning down below. So let's jump into it. Number one, if you're choosing to breastfeed, I had about three different pumps for my first baby. At the time, the LV pump was like a really, like it was, everybody was using the LV pump. It seemed really cool, really discreet, really small, fit in your like nursing bra nicely. I just did not get on with the LV pump at all. I almost felt like my boobs were too big for the LV pump and it just didn't really feel comfortable to me. Like, I don't know if it was something that I was doing, but the milk kept kind of like not going in the pump, babe. Do you know what I mean? It kept just like ending up all over my t-shirt instead. It was probably, that was probably a me problem. But I ended up replacing it a few weeks into my breastfeeding journey with the Medella pump. Now, Medella are a really amazing brand. Their breast pumps are more like hospital grade. So the midwife often recommends them to you if you seem to be struggling with supply or just struggling with breastfeeding in general. I was always very open-minded to the idea of how I was going to be feeding sane. I wasn't absolutely dead set on breastfeeding. I was always open to the idea of formula, which Saint ended up being a formula baby after he was kind of like six weeks old. So we did breastfeed for the first little bit, but this time I really want to give breastfeeding another go. And I just know off my experience of doing it once, getting a really good, reliable, decent pump is um, something that I will be investing in. So just go for the bit of kit that you know works. Sometimes, yes, they are a bit of an investment, but if it's something that you really wanna give a good go at, personally, from my experience, I would just say jump straight in with the hospital grade pump. No messing around, babe, do you know what I mean? Pump and go. Number two, we ended up buying literally every bottle, every dummy under the sun from any type of brand. We were given loads, people bought them for us. We ended up just like buying little ones on the supermarket in preparation for his arrival. This time I'm just gonna be sticking to man bottles and man dummies. They are self-sterilizing. You can pop them in the microwave. It's just a great brand and I would recommend MAM over any other bottle or dummy brand if you're choosing to use bottles and dummies. Kind of similar from the previous point. Last time we bought low, like, oh my God, I've literally not even decluttered Saint's drawers yet, which I need to do in preparation for baby number two. But we bought loads of blankets, loads of muslins, loads of swaddles. This time around, I'm just gonna be sticking to like five, maybe, big, 
huge. I think they're actually like technically swaddle cloths. Things like this, absolutely ginormous, babe. Goes right over, it could literally be a blanket for you, let alone the baby, but it goes right over your whole kind of like shoulder area where you're gonna be burping the baby. It goes all down your back. There's enough little like excess fabric here to like wipe the baby if you need to. I just love big cloths big burping cloths like this instead of something like this which we never ended up using like the tiny little cloths that kind of we didn't really feel as if they did very much yeah i'm just going to be buying like four to five of these big ones that you can kind of use as a muslin as a cloth as a blanket as a swaddle wash and rotate babe got to think about the laundry okay because two kids i'm barely keeping on top of my laundry with three of us in this house let alone four okay next up is the bedside crib so last time we had i'm th pretty sure it's called the snooze four or something like that at the time again it was like what everybody was using it seemed to be the next to me cot and don't get me wrong it was good it served its purpose but this time around i'm gonna be going for a different next to me crib i'm really liking this one that i've seen at mamas and papas that i saw at the baby show it's very soft um very neutral it goes really nicely with the aesthetic of our bedroom it just looks cozier and nicer and i know that aesthetic not everybody cares about aesthetic at all. I guess my point with this one is there's nothing really against the snooze for it served us well. It was an okay next to me crib. I think the zipper on ours actually was like a little bit dodgy. So it, I, I never was able to use like the co-sleeping um, kind of aspect of it. We never ended up rolling down the little mesh side up to it at all. So that's one thing I do remember not loving about it so much. With things like next to me cribs, they kind of all serve their own purpose, but don't just buy the same one that everybody else has if you think there's something that you would prefer more if you know what i mean i feel like with baby products especially if you're a first time mum, there's like oh my god i'll just go with the flow and do what everybody else is doing because that's what everyone else is doing and i just need to fit in no another item actually that we really found a very similar scenario with was the mamaroo chair the mamaroo chair was a total unfortunate failure in this household saint really didn't enjoy being in the mamaroo chair i know that at the time he was born everybody and their mum had a mamaroo chair for their baby it was like the real in baby swing but saint just never took to it and i think it was because it only went one way around it was also very very big and clunky and you had to like plug it in it was a very heavy piece of kit i'm looking at getting the i think it's called the cassia swing instead which again i'll leave a link below too but it's really lightweight i've seen it already in mamas and papas like in person it's so easily portable like you can literally just lift it with one hand it's a lot freer like it allows the baby to just kind of swing around however they want to go babe they can rotate but again it was the same thing with the mama Rucha chair that, that it was with the snooze four like everybody seemed to have it at the time whereas this time i'm just choosing to go for what i think my baby's going to enjoy more instead i would say though actually like with the whole swing bouncer playmat scenario which don't worry bouncer and playmat i've got you covered when i was a first time mum, i was kind of a bit like will i even need that though because like i'm just going to be cuddling my baby 24 7 honey listen to me you're going to want to shower you're going to want to go to the loo you're going to want to go and get yourself a glass of water you will find it really really handy if your baby does have something just to chill in for a little bit so if there's ever a moment where it's just you and the baby in your house and you need to go off and do something those kind of play things for baby are really, really handy. But again, it's just about finding the one that works for you. One thing I regret having in my first time postpartum with a newborn is the Tommy Tippy prep machine. Now, don't get me wrong, this was a good bit of kit, but after a few months, we discovered the Baby Brother prep machine and our life completely changed. The Tommy Tippy, you have to literally like stand and wait for about five minutes for this bottle to be able to be ready. You have to put the scoops in yourself. Baby Brezen machine is literally just like ordering a coffee. Like you literally just press one button and the formula and the milk or water, sorry, is all like dispersed into the bottle at the same time. And it literally takes 30 seconds. It's so easy in the middle of the night, it makes a lot less noise. It's just for us personally, we found a much more convenient um, like prep bottle machine. Last time we had the Aquascale baby bath, which was like, 
I got it because it was the most expensive bit on the market at the time. I thought that meant that it would be like really great, really amazing. Whereas in actuality, don't get me wrong, the bath was cool, like Saint enjoyed it, it worked well, but I think what you pay for is like being able to use the scales. It's like it's got like digital scales and stuff in it. We never used the scales. We literally just used it. Saint could have been in a bucket and it would have had the same effect, babe. Like, it, we literally just used it as a tub. So this time around, we're gonna be just using a, I think it's called the Angel Care Mesh Seat, which you can literally just pick, purchase from Amazon. I'm pretty sure it's like literally 20 pounds. I know that the snuggle baths are like a good option as well, but I would definitely say with the bathtub, don't worry about like going big and bougie and expensive. They just need a tub. Sleep suits. <sighs> I'm actually gonna take this opportunity to just go off for a little bit on baby outfits, okay? Because if there is one person in the world that overbought outfits for their baby, it's me. Saint had every single cute outfit under the sun for newborn, zero to one, zero to three, three to six, even like six to nine and nine to 12. I just feel like now, don't get me wrong, I'm definitely still gonna be getting a few cute outfits, but unfortunately it is those stunning, cute, tiny little baby outfits that are the most inconvenient to change your baby in and out of. I'm talking buttoned sleep suits, babe, okay? Don't even waste your time with them. You're gonna just want the ones with the zips, with the hands that have the little mittens and the feet, and you are gonna be good to go. My favorite brand for them actually were Baby Mori. At the time that we had Saint, they do loads of really good, really comfortable, very high quality, really soft, easy to put on sleep suits. So I'm definitely gonna be buying some more for baby number two from there. But I have noticed that other brands have just like picked up on the fact that more people seem to want those kind of sleep suits now, just the easier outfits. So I'll see if I can find the neat and link them below for you. Going back to the feeding scenario. Now, obviously I know this really depends on how you're choosing to feed your baby. If you are bottle feeding your baby, one thing I wish we just never bothered with was those like Tommy Tippy bottle warmers that you like put a little bit of water in it warms the bottle some people love them some people just are kind of neutral to them i was definitely very neutral to them also you could even just put the bottle in a bowl of hot water like these bottle warmers are great and they serve their purpose i think for certain scenarios like maybe if you're traveling and you don't have access to a bowl or a kettle or whatever but i found i wasn't really going anywhere apart from downstairs babe when i first had saints so i would just say bottle warmers not necessary for me this time around the last thing i regret buying although i say regret i'm literally looking at it right now i don't regret you my love because you are stunning and you fit the aesthetic and you're gorgeous and amazing but i'm gonna be that second time mum that says to everybody as those first time mums get the rocking chair don't worry about getting like a cool bougie chair that looks stunning i know obviously like you're literally talking to the woman who loves stunning things and i literally bought the stunning chair myself, but it's not a rocking chair. It's just like a Cajun chair, I guess you would call it. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it served us well, but if there's one thing I've learned, it's that when you're doing the middle of the night feeds, you're tired, babe. You wanna be able to just lean back a little bit. You wanna have a headrest. You wanna be able to put your feet out. They are an investment. Rocking chairs, from what I've seen, are not like cheap, but I would absolutely say that they are a great investment and we are definitely gonna be buying one for baby number two's nursery. Moving on to things that I loved and will be definitely using again for second time. First of all, might sound really not necessary to some people, but a nappy bin. Our nappy bins, I don't know what we would have done without them, guys. Our ones, I think we just got them from Tommy Tippy. They were like 20 pounds. You get like the, um, nappy bag wheels that insert in them oh my gosh they're like getting rid of the odors it's discreet it looks nice you don't have to have like a plastic bag hanging off your baby's door we have one for upstairs and one for downstairs and yeah lifesaver going off from the whole upstairs downstairs thing one thing i would really really recommend is having like a changing station with a nappy caddy full of nappies wipes nipple cream, dummies, cotton wool, like whatever you feel like is your little essentials kit. I'd make yourself a nappy caddy, put it in a spot downstairs, put another one in a spot upstairs in your baby's room or next to your bed or whatever with a changing mat and 
you are going to be so thankful for your past self for doing that because it means you don't have to go upstairs every single time the baby needs to change a nappy. Another thing I love and will definitely be reusing this time around, although I never stopped really, <laughs> is the Amazon drying rack that I bought for Saint. It is just like a heated drying rack that you plug into the wall, but the way it's kind of like shaped and built is i don't know if they meant for it to be like this but it's perfect for baby clothes like little tiny bodysuits and trousers and jumpers it's it's perfect that's like the priority like baby saying that's their drying rack like mine and connor's in my mind our clothes our wet laundry clothes are not allowed on that drying rack because that's for the kids i might have to purchase a separate one for me and con because it's that good we had a Moses basket downstairs when Satan was a newborn and I really, really enjoyed having it actually. It just meant that he could always be like where I was when he was tiny. Even when he wasn't tiny, like even when he was up to like maybe three months, when it, whenever he was happy to kind of just like be plopped in there to go down to sleep. It just meant that he could always be in the same room as me even if I was downstairs or upstairs. Some people do choose to use their Moses baskets as the next to me cribs. Personally, that's not something I would do just because I like having the option of being able to just open my eyes when I'm led down on my pillow and seeing the baby like straight on through the mesh of the next to me crib as opposed to like the wooden rattan, I don't know what the material is, sorry, of a Moses basket and like then having to stand up or like sit up to then get the baby out, you know? But for like a downstairs kind of like sleeping arrangement, the Moses basket was definitely very handy. Talking of sleep, Sane absolutely adored his little love to dream. They were brilliant. He loved them. Always had a really, really good night's sleep whenever he was in one of them. Again, I'll leave them all linked below, but definitely going to be reusing them. They were really, really handy. They just like zipped up and down. I never really got to grips with being able to like swaddle a baby in a big cloth. So they were very convenient. Oh my God, this black and white play mat for newborns is the best thing since sliced bread. When babies are first born, I'm pretty sure I'm correct when I say this, they don't see colour or something and black and white is very stimulating for them and we had this gorgeous little black and white play mat that we'd just lie him down on and it would have like lots of sensory things and I remember it really really stimulating him and he was really interested in it for like a while like he'd be happy to be on there for like 20 minutes half an hour so definitely gonna be getting that back out again for baby number two a white noise machine oh my gosh i wish i could go back and share this tip with myself i feel like everybody says it now i feel like it it wasn't like as big a deal when i first gave birth to say but having a white noise machine you don't know a good night's sleep until you've got a white noise machine babies love white noise and as saint's got older like he still sleeps with his white noise we find that it's a really good focus for him to sleep with if we're being like really noisy and there's like work going on in the house or we're downstairs making loads of noise it's just very soothing for babies and we didn't introduce it to Satan until he was like two months old or something because we just didn't even realize it was a thing but again he slept a lot sounder when he had his white noise we've got a really really good one from amazon which was really cheap it's portable does loads of different it doesn't just do white noise it does like lullabies and it has a little night light on it and yeah would really recommend so i'll leave that link below emergency formula when I'd first given birth to Saint. Like I said, I really wasn't dead set on either bottle feeding or breastfeeding. I just kind of was like, whatever's gonna make my baby happy and me happy, we'll go with that. And I'm really glad that I went into it with such an open mind because although I was breastfeeding for the start and I did continue to for a few weeks, like I mentioned before, on, I think it was maybe day four or five, like in the middle of the night, I, remember ringing my midwife in a state because I just could not breastfeed anymore. At that point, on that night, I was so exhausted. I don't think I'd slept for ages. I was having a little bit of a breakdown and we didn't have any formula in the house because we just hadn't thought to buy any. Like I just thought, I'll just try breastfeeding and what's gonna be the problem? The problem is if you have your breakdown like I did at like midnight or like 2am whenever it was and all the shops are shut and your baby needs to be fed and you're feeling like you can't do it or your milk's not there or your nipples are really sore or whatever so even if you never end up using it i would just recommend having that little emergency stash of formula just in case especially in those 
very 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 early days like the first week next up i absolutely love our washable play mats from totter and tumble i believe it's called it's what we have in the playroom we still have them there now our downstairs is like hard like tiled floor so when it came to the playroom i wanted a bit more of a softer floor to lie my baby's head down on obviously that really helped with all of saint's progression as he was then crawling and on his knees a lot and then he was walking and like falling over as he was taking his first few steps and learning how to do it and the best thing though is the fact that they are washable because although they're like very durable and yeah provide a lot of softness for the baby you're going to be dealing with sick you're going to be dealing with poo wee milk like loads of spillages are going to happen wherever you choose to have your baby and i just cannot imagine how tiring it would have been constantly like getting these big rugs or having to wash them every single time something got on them. The fact that they were just washable and like scrubbable and wipeable, really good pack. A bath time thermometer was something that we found really handy when we first had Saint. I'm not gonna lie, like sometimes I do still use a bath time thermometer just because <laughs> It's like, oh my God, like I love hot baths, but I don't want to put my week old baby in a hot bath, babe. I want it to just be perfect. And like, you do have to have it at a set temperature, especially when they're a newborn. So bath time thermometer, it's very handy. The baby born bouncer was something that we found really great last time that I'm probably going to be using again this time too. I really liked the fact that it was reactive. Like if the baby kicks, then it bounces like swings back and forth if that makes sense so it kind of like teaches them about their their body and being aware of their surroundings i guess there are lots and lots of baby bounces out on the market baby jordan is on the more expensive side but we loved it monitors now this is something that is personal to every parent and there are so many out there essentially all of them do the same job but i really really loved using the owlet monitor with saint and we still use it to this day not the sock part of it but the camera so things i loved about the owlet was that on the camera it tells you the temperature of the room it has a really really good vision of the baby and wherever you're like filming but also it connects to this sock from outlet that you get in like the monitor bundle when they are first born i was very very anxious about sits and breathing so we ended up using the sock and it's literally just a, a small little thing that you just put on their foot they literally like the saint didn't was never bothered by it but it monitors their breathing and their temperature and I'm pretty sure their heart rate and it just provided me with so much peace of mind because then it comes up on the monitor and it kind of alerts you if there's an issue. I also struggle quite badly with phantom crying. I could always swear if in my early postpartum stages um, and actually this continued up until Saint was probably about six to eight months old. I swore I could always hear him crying and it ended up kind of driving me mad really because i would think he was crying so i'd rush up to where he was and he'd be absolutely fine i'd be like oh that's so weird though he was just crying connor was like no he was never crying and it was just a big mind game all the time so being able to have the monitor and having it like pop up if he is crying or if there's a change in the room or movement was detected or whatever just provided me with a lot of peace of mind so like i said monitors are a personal choice and there are so many out there but we loved using the outlet monitor and we're probably going to be using that one again too a baby pod now i know these aren't everybody's cup of tea which is totally fine but we loved our docker top they sometimes have a bit of bad rap because of the bumpers on the sides of them so you're not supposed to allow your baby to sleep in it which is fine but again just in those early stages where they are happy to just kind of be put down for a little bit and just kind of lie there when they're really tiny god i'm now thinking about my year and a half old son and being blown away at the fact that he was ever able to just like lie there and chill with his eyes open and be like what are you doing yeah it's just like a good option to have them on if you are just chilling watching tv or you've just finished breastfeeding or wherever you are you're on the set on the sofa and you don't want to have them on you you can just pop them next to you in this little like baby pod a good nappy bag now nappy bags again are something very personal loads and loads of mums that i know just don't even bother having a nappy bag they just literally use like a big handbag and they just kind of throw everything in there personally i love having everything kind of compartmentalized and very like organized so there are some really really great nappy bags out there on the market i love the tiber and mar ones they are really cool there was another brand that we really liked i'm pretty sure it's called Gigi and olive or something like that but essentially what you want in your nappy bag is space for bottles so some of them come with insulated like sections like bottle 
bits that you just slot a bottle into and it if you put like a warm bottle in it it should keep it warm for a while there's like a bit for a laptop sleeve there's bits for a changing mat and yeah just loads of different compartments that you can get in these amazing nappy bags so i'd recommend a good nappy bag and finally this is one for the mums not necessarily for the baby i would say one thing you want to do when you've just given birth and you're out of the hospital or you're getting back into your flow of being at home one thing i would do for yourself and this is a piece of advice that my friend gave me before I gave birth to Saint and it's like the number one piece of advice that I would give to all of my expecting friends now is to think of your future self when you've just given birth and like the week that it's going to follow and just either treat yourself to a few new nice pairs of pajamas or wash and get them really nice and like soft and ready for being able to lounge in for like the next week after giving birth I treated myself to a couple of Primark night shirts and like, don't get me wrong, I love the White Company. I'm the White Company's biggest fan. Love their jammies, but in those postpartum stages, you know, babes, we've got a newborn to deal with, we're bleeding, we're probably leaking a little bit. Like you don't really wanna go for the bougie ones, but just treat yourself to maybe a couple of nice new night shirts or pairs of pajamas from Nex or something like that. And just have them ready and waiting for you when you've just given birth because it's such a treat and you can sit down and watch your favorite TV show, eat your snacks, be comfy. Can't wait for postpartum newborn life again. I really, really can't. And so that comes to the end of my baby products list, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm actually, just popped into my head. I am actually gonna share with you a little list that I had on my phone when I was preparing for my first child and it's kind of like a tick list of everything that I felt I needed. It's all compartmentalized into like the sleeping situation, the travel situation, clothing, entertainment, food, toiletries, extras, hospital bag, stuff like this. So I'm gonna pop them up as screenshots and you guys can save them or screenshot them yourself or make your own version of it on your notes. But this list to me like saved my life. And I feel like if you've sat here and watched this whole video, first of all, I'm incredibly thankful for you. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed it. And good luck with your baby if you're having one. And of course, a huge congratulations. But um, I feel like, yeah, if you've found this video useful, then you'd find that list really useful too. So hopefully this video has served you in some way. But thank you so much for watching. I love you all so, so much. And I'm so grateful for your friendship, your love, your support, your well wishes for our growing family. Can't wait to see you guys in the next video and I will see you soon. Love you guys. Bye.